Um, I was driving my 71 440 Cuda. Now that I'm here in Texas with all these country roads, man, it's better to have a big block Mopar with the five speed. Wow. People want to apprentice. Well, I get like written letters, emails, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, every possible way that people can get to me and want to like come and have me teach them stuff. You know, the, the only way to see the real value in my skills is to give them away. I get to work and like, realize what I know how to do and show people. I want to see this trade thrive and go back to the 40s where, you know, craftsmanship and pride and hand making something had a value. You know, and I think it's all about this. It's your hands and using your hands and giving yourself a sense of self pride. It feels good to do it as fast as I do it, you know, and like it gives me an opportunity to like realize I guess how, how skilled I am and how lucky I am to have the skills I have. And you know, it's, I'm not the greatest metal worker in the world because I'm still learning and I'll, I'll keep learning and keep trying new things till the day I die. And so hopefully I can keep passing that on. Cool, so we got these pieces ready to go. We can go turn this edge. We'll put the, put that bead down the center. Maybe get something fancy. And then uh, put a wired edge. And then we'll uh, weld it back together. We should be cool. Just pretend like that's the fender. If you invest in good quality tools, they will last forever if you take care of them and maintain them right. Like my beading tools and stuff like that I've had since I worked at Boyd's. Start with this thing, as close as you can get it so where it'll still fold, so about a thickness of the piece of material. Put it in there, get it to touch, and count. Because we're doing two pieces, so you want the both to be the same step. So one, two, so that's one revolution, and I'm holding it up. You'd rather do it on a test piece than take your nice, pretty part you just spent a lot of time on and go, oops. <laughs> I always keep this thing loose so I can always get my body like kind of comfortable position. You can always go in a direction where you can, you can see the line and you can see where the dies are hitting it. So to have, so that's not much of a, a radius, you know, that's like kind of just a yeah. So how I get a bigger radius, let a little bit of slack out, you know, let this. So just remember your inch and a half on the first one, or one and a half turns on the first one, but go only go one on your first pass. Yeah. Then go another half turn and clean it up. And then one turn on the second step. You don't wanna, cause that's digging into the metal. So you only wanna do one shot. You don't wanna make a bunch of pass, yeah. make as minimal passes as you can. So it doesn't dig a hole that you have to file out. But the cool thing about this, if you, if you get a wobble in it or something, just stick it in the planishing hammer and hammer it back flat and then start over, you know, instead of trying to like dig deeper or push it or whatever. Okay, you wanna go to the next one? Let me see real quick, Luke, we might wanna go a full turn, because it's not. Eeyole. Looks good. The most important thing is to remember your turns, because like when you, if you forget and you'll have one, it's like the wrong step or, you know, does it get stronger? Does it feel? What's that? Yeah. Little, little strength action to it. It's getting there. It sucked it in a little bit because that took a little bit of material. But well, when we come push it down, then it will should go right to the right spot. On that edge, We'll just tune that up by hand. 
You normally just try not to worry about it, though. Yeah, it'll, it'll come around. That looks good. Just wondering, but you think you could do that on a piece that's connected? Like if this was just one fender? Just like oh, one. well, we wouldn't be able to get it in the machine because it wouldn't, it wouldn't oh, yeah, feed no. through here. So that's why it's good to cut it. It's cutting in half gives you good like opportunity to like detail stuff, you know. I did that mostly just to clean it. So to clean that edge before we weld it. You know where you get the stuff to like hold chemicals, right? Yeah. Beauty supply store. Because yeah. women put all kinds of crazy <laughs> in their hair. That's the only thing that'll hold up to like acetone and lacquer thinner. Yeah, just make sure clean and make sure you take that when they kiln this stuff, you know, when they, it has like a, a finish on it that doesn't weld, like to weld through. So you gotta make sure you take like coarse scotch bright and go through that, get that finish off of it. Is there a reason why you take welding as opposed to other kind of welding? Uh, well, it's, it's pretty much the standard deal. You know, we could gas weld it, but something like this that isn't super hypercritical of leaking and we don't have to do any shaping. You know, gas welding's good if you have to do some shaping after the fact and it has to stay malleable. This can be stiff and strong as we want it and it doesn't really matter. and then fold, you know, roll the edge and then mount it.